What if God says, you know what, and I don't think He will, but God says, you know what, I just want these people to live in poverty. So what? Brother Sam's quotation is on my mind all yesterday and today. He said, I sleep somewhere every night. <laughs> it's pretty true, isn't it? And friend, I would tell you something, it doesn't really matter to me where I sleep at. You know why? Because that's just things that pertain to the flesh. It doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. And can I say to you that a diagnostic checklist for whether or not you're living after the flesh or after the Spirit is what matters to you. They that are after the flesh do mind to the things of the flesh. Pastor, I don't have time to serve. Lord, I've got to take care of this and this and this and this. And I've got responsibilities. You have to understand. I'm just telling you, Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 says, if you mind the things of the flesh, that's what you are. Your flesh. That, that, I'm asking you, does it say you're not saved? No, it says this is why the law has jurisdiction over you and you feel condemned. It's practical, friend. First diagnostic, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. Can I say to you that what will happen is if you mind the things of flesh... Somebody give me some illustrations of some things that we could mind or, or seek after a lot that are after flesh. From this side over here. My, my clothes are... Uh... Brother Nick, you look handsome today. Nice clothes. Okay. Um, okay? I want to look good. Okay? What else? My vehicle. I know. If you had a 94 Dodge Caravan that cost all of, what, 250 95. 90, oh, he's got a 95 Dodge Caravan now. When, when the kids moved out, they, they just they moved up. Um, okay, so it's things of the flesh. Okay, your car, your clothes. What about your house? What about your bank account? I want to tell you something. All those things are going to burn up. I hate to say it about the caravan, but it will. We will not even talk about the rabbit. Someday there'll be no more. And I'm telling you, if they last, and all the way through God's judgment of this world to the time when there's final judgment, God's going to burn everything in this earth up. It's all going to burn up. That's why, by the way, I'm an environmental activist. I just think that, uh, but I, I'm a stewardship activist. In other words, God's given us this earth, and we ought to have dominion over it. We ought to use it in, the, in a responsible way. But we ought to use it. And I'm going to tell you something. If all the oil runs out, and all the wood gets burned up, and all the soil gets de re, uh, re re depleted. Yeah, depleted, that's the word. Uh, if, if the earth gets global warming and it freezes, it don't matter. God's going to burn it all up anyway. He's going to burn the concrete. It's all going to burn. And I'm just telling you, if what you mind is something that will be on this earth when you die, whether it's Brother Nick's mint green shirt, or my dad's... Uh, Forest green Dodge Caravan with a blue uh, woody tailgate. It's going to burn. And when we're gone, it'll be here and it won't matter a bit. If you mind those things, my friend, you mind things that are temporary. They won't matter. Okay, let's finish up. The Bible says to be carnally minded in verse 6 is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now let me ask you a question. Do you want to be minded for things that die and burn? Do you want to be minded for things that are alive and peaceful. Christian, here's diagnostic number two. What's diagnostic number one? How do we know if we're carnally minded? We mind, what we're minded. We mind the things of the flesh. Okay? Diagnostic number two. Is this life and peace? Life and peace. In other words, jurisdiction of the law or life and peace. Let me ask you a question. Would the description of yesterday in your life be fulfilling of the law? Fulfilling of Christ? I mean, I got to fulfill righteousness through Jesus Christ, and the result was the reigning peace of God and real spiritual... I mean, I just had... Yesterday, I had a... a I just had a bounce in my step and a reason to live. I want to serve Christ. Was that what happened yesterday? Or did yesterday you try to get, try to find some peace? What reigns? Diagnostic number one, what do you mind? Number two, where's your peace? Friend, I want to tell you something. If you're living for Christ, you won't feel condemnation. Instead, you'll feel peace. Amen. Your feelings are important, by the way, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Who, whose feelings belong to you? Who, whose feelings are yours? Yours are. Your feelings belong to you, and you're the one that has to deal with them. 
and they're reality for you, and nobody else can give you your feelings. You have them yourself. And if, you're, if you feel condemned, my friend, you've got a problem, that's a diagnostic. It's a problem. It means you're, you're living for the flesh. I just feel condemned. Well, it's a problem. It's not a problem with God. It's a problem with you. You feel condemned is because you are. By God's law, it means you're living after the flesh. Sin revives and you die. Sin, sin reigns, the law revives and you die. You feel condemned. Okay. The carnal mind's enmity against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. If you're carnally minded, my friend, you won't feel close to the Lord. You'll feel like God condemns you. I've had people condemn God about this. Well, I just God's just a condemning God. The more I get to know about Him, the more He just condemns me. No, friend. The more carnal you get, the more God's law condemns you. See, God sent Jesus Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Why? So we can live under righteousness, so we can reign through Him. And God didn't condemn you, your sin did. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's the conclusion. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. I have one more point I want to make. We're out of time today. We're going to have to stop here and we'll have to pick up next week where we left off. I want to conclude the way, this way this morning. First of all, Christian, we're not talking about salvation. Can we make that very plain? You see, my friend, if you take this context and put it in the context of salvation, you'll never get spiritual victory. And I hear all kind of preaching that takes problems that Christians have and blames God. You know, that's what happens when we say, well, you know what, if this is... It, I'd be spiritually minded if I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. But what happened was, I, evidently, I didn't get saved. I wanted God to save me. I asked Him to, but He didn't save me. And so... Um, you know whose fault that is? If you want to be saved and God didn't save you, my friend, it's His fault. And you can blame Him for your sin. Go ahead. I, I, I'm being sarcastic, but I mean that's a fact. It really is. If, if you wanted God to save you so that you could be a new creature and you wanted Him to just make you over new so you didn't have sinful desires and didn't live for sinful flesh, and then He didn't do it, then He offered you something that He, did, he extended you an offer for salvation and, and he, he didn't give it to you. And I want to just say to you that he's evil. If that's God, it's not God, he's not evil. But if that's what you think, my friend, you'll never get spiritual victory. And I'm telling you what people blame on God hinders spiritual victory. A lot of preaching does that. Much preaching says, if you're doing this and this and this, I wonder how you can be saved. No, my friend, I wonder how you can be fulfilling the righteousness of Jesus Christ if you're living in sin. That's the correct statement, isn't it? If you're doing this and this and this, I wonder how you can be serving the Lord. Could you? The answer is no. If you're living for the flesh, you're not living for God, and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. A Christian, in conclusion today, I want to close by saying one thing, and that is this. Or by asking one question, that is this. Do you feel condemned? Do you feel condemned? Or do you feel like you're the fulfilling of the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Do you feel condemned? Or do you feel as though your life is a fulfilling of Jesus Christ? I'm not today preaching feelings. But feelings are reality, aren't they? And how do you... Condemnation is something that we feel. That's a fact. It's a fact. Condemnation is, but it's a fact that we feel. And if you're condemned, you say, I feel condemned, my friend, not by Christ's righteousness. Christ's righteousness doesn't condemn. Christ's righteousness enables us to fulfill God's law in a way that keeps the law from being able to condemn. And if you're saved today, can I say to you that God's plan in the person of Jesus Christ on the cross is for you to be free to righteousness? God's plan for you is liberty. Not to use liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but my friend, His plan for you is for you to live righteousness. Free from sin. Free from the condemnation of the law. And that's what God wants you to have. And my question to you is, is that what you're living today? We see the diagnostic, hey, you, you live for the flesh. If you love the flesh, then the things of the flesh, you're going to mind those things. They're going to matter to you. Do the things of this world matter to you? 
or the things of Christ in eternity matter to you? What matters? It's good diagnostic.